Okay, the next topic on off-grid homesteading is heating and cooling. Um, first off, we'll, we'll start off with hot water. So on the roof there you can see um, a, a um, solar hot water system and just behind you can see uh, the chimney cap from a water heater inside the, the house. Okay, when you're living off grid, to get water up to these uh, solar hot water systems, and there are many different designs. Um, this is probably perhaps one of the older designs, but there are far more efficient ones out there now. The point is that you've got to get water up to there. Uh, and when you're on an off-grid system, you're relying on possibly two systems. One is using electric pumps, or two, if you're in the right position, probably uh, gravity feed. In either case, um, to get enough water pressure to your water appliances inside the house, such as shower heads, the kitchen, the laundry, and that sort of thing, um, you're still probably looking at some sort of pumping system to to get water pressure up to those those points inside the house but these solar hot water systems also have a backup system now over the last couple of days we've had uh, some fairly cloudy weather in urban areas uh, they have uh, heating elements in it electric uh, boosters to heat the water on days of low sunshine or cold weather but when you were looking at off-grid, then you've got to look at other means as a backup to heat the water. And one of them on this place is gas. So we'll go over and have a look at it. Okay. What this particular homestead has got for backup uh, heating for the hot water system on the roof is uh, bottled gas. LPG, propane, whatever you want to call it. Um, this also provides gas to the uh, gas cooking appliances in the kitchen. But if we just pan around a bit, there's your solar hot water gas backup system. Now this is a, a fairly old system I'd say. Some of these work with on the idea of uh, using a pilot flame off the gas which, which burns all the time and it's set up in such a way that when you turn on a, um, a tap inside, hot water tap, uh, there's sensors in there that sense um, the taps being opened and the pilot light flashes up the, the gas heating in there to heat the water. There are other types now, more modern types, where um, they don't have a pilot light, they just sense the water flow going through the, through the system and uh, it just flashes up and heats it as it goes. But again, we look at the integration side of things uh, to get water pressure up into the house, you still require some sort of pumping system off these tanks uh, that I covered in an earlier video. So you can see with, um, again, uh, there's an integration system uh, relying on solar power to work electric pumps to pump the water up into the collector on the roof, the hot water solar collector on the roof and also through uh, this um, um, backup uh, gas heating system. Some of the problems we face in this area is uh, during the winter we get very heavy frosts and the, uh, the water can freeze in the pipes uh, under the house and of course the length of the hot water pipe runs under the house to your various water appliances in the house. Now while uh, you turn on a hot water tap inside the house or a shower head or something like that uh, the length of the pipe under the house has got cold water sitting in it. That's the hot water pipe. And when you turn a tap on, you've got to wait for that water to come through. 
uh, until the, the heated water either off the solar system or this gas uh, backup system starts coming through the tap so uh, in that respect uh, you've got to look at those uh, design um, solutions and problems on a house like this uh, there's an awful lot of water in the copper piping it just sits there it's cold and you've got to wait for the hot water to come through so uh, that's that's a lot of water cold water that has to flow through the tap before you actually get any hot water th through it other types of heating um, I can't go inside the house and I won't go in for privacy re reasons is that you can get uh, wood heaters um, wood stoves they've got water jackets on them uh, to heat water but in the hot summer months here uh, you really don't want to be flashing up a wood heater inside the house or that sort of thing um, on many of the older homesteads going back uh, over 50 years or 100 years um, yes when they had wood stoves they had water jackets on them uh, it was quite often built uh, as an extension to the house uh, where the heat dissipation uh, helped a lot with hot summer temperatures other types of heating well because we're on a solar system here reverse cycle air conditioning is completely out of the question uh, particularly if you've got to run them for, for long periods of time, night and day. Also the, the design of the house too. Now, as I said, I can't go inside for privacy reasons, but I do know that's open plan uh, design of a house. The common areas like the lounge room, uh, the dining room and the kitchen, it's all open area with a wood heater in there. Your bedrooms, your shower, and your toilet, come off the side sides of uh, uh, the those common areas and what I'm looking at here is is uh, the bedroom area so in this place here they use uh, wood heaters uh, in the winter months to warm up the common areas and As applicable if you need one of the uh, the bedrooms warmed up or something like that you just simply open up the door to that particular room keep the other doors closed uh, if if those rooms uh, aren't in use uh, similarly with cooking uh, it's gas they use gas here of bottles like that again we look at uh, in a previous video access roads to this place this is probably the most common type of uh, gas bottle you find on uh, off-grid um, systems uh, similar to the one uh, well actually the same type of uh, bottle gas system I use at home uh, very easy to transport uh, in the back of a ute or a trailer you've got to stand them up uh, as compared to much larger uh, gas tanks where you've got to get a truck in to fill it up now in the earlier videos uh, they're looking at road conditions in here um, yeah it's uh, it can be a problem for much larger trucks uh, to um, bring in bulk um, propane or LPG gas so this is the most common way that uh, off-grid homesteads uh, have uh, gas supplied to the house you can pick it up yourself from a, a retailer during the summer months as I said you can't run uh, air conditioners uh, off a um, off-grid solar system they, uh, they they chew a lot of power yes they are more efficient but when you're running them day and night um, then you've got some um, serious power consumption issues so the design of the house is built in such a way that you can open up doors and windows and get an airflow through the house to make it a little bit cooler um, from what I've seen inside the house, it is it is very well planned, very well laid out to cover the, the, the colder times of the year and also the hotter times of the of the year. So um, that's pretty well it uh, as far as heating and cooling goes for hot water and just uh, general living. 
Uh, there's plenty of dead firewood on this property, so there's no shortage of firewood at this time. Uh, but you've got to bear in mind too that um, over a number of years, uh, your consumption of firewood, you've really got to look at that. Um, as I said, it's fairly rugged around here, so you've got to have, have access to cut dead firewood. A means of transporting it back up to the house. And you really got to look at the supplies you've got and conserving supplies or planning ahead and providing um, dry wood supplies for the future. Anyway, that's a little bit on that. And uh, we'll go on to another topic.